Hello again, my heavy metal friends. This is George Rain from Backstage TV, and this is my home office. And now we can continue with my questions to Derek Green of Sepultura. Here it is. Um, uh, what's going to be the close future for Sepultura? What are you planning right now to promote well, I, the album? Or Yes, we're going to promote that album, and we're going to do this tour with Sacred Reich November, December in Europe. Mm -hmm. So Great. You know, there's some check dates in there <laughs> cool yeah and and so i'm excited about that and i just hope things roll out really fast in europe as far as uh, getting back to some type of normal way of life and with especially with shows so in festivals um but you know I'm, i'm keeping the faith that things can you know change there um especially over the summer um mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's that's our plan to really, you know, work the album. People have had enough time to really digest it and to listen. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting to be able to play those new songs live. So we're looking forward to that. Okay, cool. And so now if some of your uh, personal opinions, like what do you think about the rock and metal scene from the 80s till now? Because some of the people are saying, okay, the 80s and early 90s were the best period for metal you know everyone is buying albums and stuff like that but the newcomers the new bands are just saying okay no now it's great because of spotify and all these kind of platforms we have now so what is your opinion about that well i think the 80s and 90s were great in the 80s and 90s you know but it's over yeah. <laughs> a lot of like very <laughs> old-minded people are constantly thinking of the past in a way where it's like this is the best time ever i mean We always used to make fun of like people. I remember when I was younger, like make fun of older people, like, "Oh, you guys don't know anything. This was the oh, best." Yeah. <laughs> those, you know, it's the people saying that have become those mom and you know, like old people, you know, kind of yeah. old way. Of thinking, you know, not that they're old. It's just the the way of thinking. It's become very old fashioned, and that can kill a scene. You know, where people are just so much living in the past not aware of what's happening now because i think now it's an exciting time for music i think there's a lot of incredible artists out there um and and, and i think it's you know that evolution of metal and the, and the scene has grown in a way where it's much more interesting you know than the 80s and 90s there is a limited amount of bands in the 80s and 90s and therefore it was much easier to choose like oh i like that i like that But I think there's many, I mean, there's so many platforms where you can listen to music now. Sure. Artists have the ability to show their music in, in so many different ways. Um, I think the quality of, of people being independent, the quality of the music that they're able to show is fantastic. Well, I'm like, wow, they didn't spend that much money. They sound fantastic. They're able to do everything themselves. Um, I think those things are incredible to see. It's only going to get better You know, when you have like this access, you know, with young people um, mm. putting that energy into the scene, it's really important to have that young energy um, and also that open mindedness, that young way of thinking to not c cutting down everything because it's not from the 80s or 90s or something like that. You know, it's like, come on. <laughs> But there's still quite a lot of people thinking like that, really, you know. So many yeah, people are I, still thinking like, okay, it was the old days and they were the best and now it just sucks, you know. And I think also it's crazy. Okay, and now from the from the yeah. other side, like what kind of music would you listen if you would like to have a rest from metal in general? If you would like to just listen something really else or the opposite, so what would it be? It would definitely be like classical music. Mm -hmm. I think classical music is similar to metal. It's just on a different, different level. I mean... Classical music, there's a lot of notes, you know, fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes oh, it's like very dramatic, and I love that about classical and metal music. You know, it's it has those elements, but they're very different in sound. So I could go with classical any day of the any day of the week. Girl, you gotta love your man. Take him by the hand. Uh, 
do you have any memories or what do you think now about your uh, advertisement for Volkswagen? I just read about it. I've never seen that because I don't have a TV and I'm just, you know, uh, uh, kind of the internet guy. But uh, do you have any memories about that or what would you think oh, about it? I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was great that, you know, this big company was taking a risk on using a heavy metal band in mm -hmm. one of their commercials. But it was great that we didn't have to really change our demeanor ourselves. We could play ourselves, which uh, was fantastic. It was probably one of the only ways that we would do the commercial if we could really be ourselves. Um, but I thought that was such a challenge and, and such a, a great thing to do that was like out of the box for us and, and for myself singing in Portuguese for my mm -hmm. first. So I love doing stuff like that. You know, I love to do more things like that, um, you know, with humor and music. And, you know, for me, I, I have great memories of doing that commercial. Okay, I have to check that out because I got a Volkswagen car, so I should, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> o coquinho caiu na areia da praia Um dia levou pra dentro do mar Sepultura sim, é a primeira vez que você vê E um sedã como este também Mais que um sedã, um Volkswagen. Ok, uh, so uh, you're a vegan, right? You don't eat meat yeah. or anything like that. So uh, what would you say, because I'm sometimes vegetarian, not like 100%, but I'm just trying to go this direction. So what would you say to someone who would just ask you about it being a vegan? What, what does it mean and why to become a vegan? Well, I, I would say this to people to really explore your options out there. You know, think about the pluses of, of your lifestyle, of what you're eating, um, and how it has an impact on yourself and also around you. You know, mm -hmm. there is a connection with that. And a lot of people forget that they're connected to the many things that are around them. Um, and, and just be honest with yourself, you know, like be honest with your health, be honest with yourself. And, um, and take your time with it. Do the research um, and don't be afraid to experiment and try different things that are out there because there's a lot of great options out there. And, and, and this is a great time to explore different types of food and to explore the companies that are making this food and, and the process that they go through because there's more, uh, you know, you have the abilities and tools to do research now more so than ever. Um, so take advantage of that because it's something that's very important you know it's something that's every day that you do you need to eat and a mm -hmm. lot of people are educated on what they're eating and why wouldn't you want to be educated about that it's something that's extremely important because it's something that your body needs and there's sure. no reason you should be putting in the crap that's uh put out there today you know you should be i i think it's important to be knowledgeable about that because it has an impact on your health which has an impact on your family, has an impact on the environment, has an impact on the animals. And, um, and, and again, it's all connected. You know, I, I thought about it at a young age when I started to become a vegetarian at the age of 15. And mm -hmm. I, I love animals, you know, I was just like, why, why am I eating them? You know, <laughs> like, it's like, I would never kill them. I live in a place in the city. I've always lived in a place where it was never necessary to hunt to kill mm -hmm. i'm not even talking about that small amount of people that are are doing that i'm not saying they're bad either and and that's the one thing is the attitude like that comes across of being a, a vegan or plant-based i want people to know that i'm supportive of people when they're like i have one day a week where i don't eat meat that's great because that never would happen in the past you know i've mm -hmm. never you know and i and i think if people are learning and so Uh, I think it's important to to be able to answer questions for people, get rid of the stereotypes that exist around the plant-based world. And, and that was one of the reasons why I created a TV show called Highway to Health um, with another musician, Joe Callahan. And we tour and we show people how it is to have that plant-based lifestyle on the road um, in foreign places, in places we, you wouldn't imagine they'd have plant-based food. Um, to answer those questions about 
um, veganism or anything that people might have and to have people on the show that aren't necessarily only vegan, you know, to really explore that and be like, hey, one day at a time, like, mm -hmm. let's take this out or let's move this around and try this. And I think people will see the benefits um, just from, you know, example, living by example. Okay, yeah, I think that's great. I think it's a great attitude and uh, it's also cool that musicians are doing something like that, you know, because uh, we are quite seen, you know, so many people are interested in your opinion, so they start thinking, okay, maybe there is something about it. Okay, okay. cool. Uh, perfect. So, uh, what do you think about the Czech Republic? Uh, yeah. What is your connection to the Czech country and stuff like that? Um. I, 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 I love it, you know, it's like my son is... is Czech, half Czech. Mm -hmm. uh, he was born there in Prague and lives there. And, and I learned so much from the culture from, from him and, and from my ex and from my, uh, you know, just being submerged in, in the culture. And I, and I think it's a place that's growing, um, such a small country that's growing rapidly, you know. Uh, I, They're I, trying I, hard. <laughs> <laughs> really you know being a part of the european union i think it's definitely one of the top countries in the european union um for many reasons the fact that the size i like the size of it that not being so large and massive i like the fact that it's not overrun with extreme amount of tourists like other places in western europe um mm. uh, i love the fact that the the demeanor of, of czech people you know people were always working there um, good work ethics, um, reliable, um, open to foreigners working there as well, because I've met so many different foreigners who are able to establish businesses and, you know, and, and people just kind of being very honest with their opinions. You know, I, I appreciate that. Um, and, it, and it's a beautiful country. You know, it's it, it's it's a hidden gym, you know, like I tell mm -hmm. tell I'm always going to like western part of like europe and stuff but i was like you're really missing out on a lot that goes on not only in prague but in the interior of czech republic which is even better i think in a lot okay. of ways. <laughs> you know because you have like these different uh spas and the history of these like well-being spas which are incredible you have skiing you have you know like bohemia area which is which is incredible history and I mean, there's just so much there, and and, and and I think a lot of people, it's only going to grow. So I'm, I'm always stoked, excited when I see good things about Czech Republic. And, um, you know, I think, you know, a place that I'm glad that my son is half Czech, you know. And uh, what would you recommend to yourself if you could meet yourself at the age of 15? What would you say to your little self? <laughs> like, don't do this or do that or go this direction or don't go this direction. <laughs> I feel like I would say stick with piano. Your mother's <laughs> just practice. <laughs> Because at a young age, you know, I was just like, ah, ah I want to be outside. I don't want to be inside learning piano. <laughs> teacher that could teach me piano you know every day for free so i would say stick to piano because you can play any instrument once you're you know you're tuned in with that um i would say when you become in your 20s don't drink so much <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's no puzzle there it's only going to get worse if you do um and i would There's not really too, I mean, I would, I would definitely say, um, you know, study as much as possible, you know, knowledge is power. And, mm. uh, and, and those are some main things I would say, you know. <laughs> oh, great. Great, I think. And the last question I have for you is what would you say to your Czech fans? Because uh, uh, this will be seen on TV Rebel and Backstage TV, these two platforms. So what would you say to the fans here in the Czech Republic and uh, to all the people out there? Jak <laughs> Cool! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I, I can't wait to be back there. You know, I really miss Czech Republic. I miss my family. Um, I, I we It's one of our favorite places to play. Um, Brutal Salt Festival and uh, Masters of Rock Festival are two of the greatest festivals just because the warmth of the people. Um, I think many artists feel the same way, that they love playing Czech Republic. And we can't wait to, to see you all very soon. Okay, perfect. So, man, thank you so much for the great interview. Uh, hope you're going to be well and hope we can see each other soon here in our country uh, during your tour. And just stay healthy. Take care, yeah. man. And thanks you again. Too. All okay. right. Okay. So, bye-bye. Have a nice day. Bye. You